Hi there. I'd like to spend some time at this moment to go over a hymn called Moment by Moment. It was written by Daniel Whittle, who lived from 1840 to 1901. This may not be as familiar as a hymn that uh, for the other hymns that he wrote, but that is why I chose it. And I have it available to download, so you can go over it with me. And uh, if you would like to learn how to do it with a different style, or the style that I like to use. Uh, I'm not saying this is the right or wrong way to do it, it's just the way I like to do it. And some people have asked me to share some of this information, which I'm going to do here right now. If you have the hymn downloaded and printed off, we'll go over it now and we'll see different styles of playing this hymn. For some people, which isn't anything wrong with it, they like to pull all, all the stops and play. Open up everything. All the notes are correct, but there's a lot more you can do with this hymn than playing it note for note and uh, with all the stops pulled. There's a lot more that can be done with the hymn. So let's see if I just pull out just a few stops instead and I play it legato. It changes the mood drastically. Now let's say if I leave these same stops pulled out and now I start phrasing the music with using my feet uh, the variance in my feet to keep the bellows controlled that will change the volume of the song. You can rise music and then let it fall. So with that is some ideas of how to play a hymn and I'm going to show you some of these ways of doing this. When learning to play the reed organ and playing hymns on reed organs, I always suggest always start out simple. Use just the diapason and a melodia, just one single rank. Leave all the others off, no matter how great you think it sounds. This is a this bass foundation is always good to start on with or start up with. So now, if I play this and I play the F and the A and the C. That's my starting notes, of course. But I do not repeat that on the second note. If there's any notes in the, treble, in the bass, treble, or alto, they always stay held through if you see the repeat in the next note. For example, on uh, the first two notes here, I don't lift them. I'm still holding them down. I'm only repeating this the uh, soprano note. The bass note stayed F throughout that entire phrase, so I kept it down the entire time. The notes are always running into each other. You keep them as close together as possible. I'm playing slower than I would. And I totally bombed there. But <laughs> this is the idea that you want to get across with legato. Now, let's take a look at the feet and what your feet are doing. Now with your feet is the most difficult part of playing the reed organ if you wanted to use the treadles for expression. I'm going to open up a number of stops here just to give you an idea of what the feet do. So now if we look at the section here in your screen that uh, right here with my feet we will see 
how it reacts to um, to the chords and how the sounds how it sounds when I uh, use quick motion or slow motion. It's delayed. If I stop, you have to coast to get to uh, your softer sounds. So this is the trouble with reed organ. When you're doing the treadles, it has to be very steady, and you have to listen very closely to what you're getting. So if you're going to go softer, you have to treadle much softer until it fades away. I'm going to play the first section of this hymn and I'll let you look at the feet and so you can see the differences in the treadling. or sub bass, I'm going to have to treadle faster. Now there's a last part there that I um, I use two feet at the same time to fade out. I personally call this a two foot fade. There's really no other terms that I know of that uh, describe that. But this is what I call it because you're using two feet at the same time to fade away. It's a lot easier than doing this in a transfer where you may hear the, the transfer of your feet. And if, if you use it at the same time, we'll get some air here. Play the ending. So I'll start with a transfer, and now I'm using two feet at the same time to fade away. This way I'm using both exhausters at the same time in control with your feet at the same time. You can uh, control your fade much easier than using one foot and then transferring to the other foot. Uh, you'll get that break in between uh, where it's just difficult to do. Sub bass, that is where it becomes a little more trickier. The sub bass can only be within this octave of the organ keyboard. If I go out of it, it's going to lose the bass. Example, if I just play it as written, with a sub bass, there's no sub bass now. Now there is. So I'm not really even using the sub bass. So you have to transpose the last note down one octave into the sub bass and keep it in the sub bass. This is where your hymn playing becomes a lot more advanced on a reed organ because you're transposing on the fly. I'm also taking the tenor and putting it in my right hand because I can't reach an octave, two octaves at some times with my left hand. So you're moving the tenor, alto, and soprano 
into the right hand and just the bass in your left hand only. last line. From there. Personal preference. You may not like it. I do, so I play it. It's just the way it is. So, uh, I like that discordant and it goes to, uh, for a part of a climax on a phrase. And then you can go back into your phrase nice and soft. Cadence on on the end. Another option for an ending would be a false ending. Instead of going to the F, I go to a D minor. And then go back to a B. Lots of little simple things you can do to a hymn to make it more interesting. I'd like to carry on with a short series of videos regarding this hymn and we're going to go over all the different variations that I've used uh, demonstrating this hymn here first. First off, learn the hymn, get familiar with it and uh, practice legato and then I'm going to start going over the treadle movements and stop changes and just different little notes you can throw in here and there to make your hymn interesting. So uh, we'll continue, carry on with this and uh, hopefully it'll help you with, uh, with your reed organ playing. So in the meantime, just be creative, make music, and have fun. Talk to you later. <laughs>